We're going to now talk about uh, a really fun phenomenon having to do with sound. The Doppler effect also is pertinent to light as well and the astronomy, um, trying to determine distances between uh, distant galaxies, the Doppler effect is used. Uh, but in sound, it's a, it's a fun, interesting phenomenon, and I'm glad that I get to be the one to introduce it to you. If you have a truck that's approaching you, so here's, um, well, this is a stationary truck. So this is a truck at rest, and it's sounding its siren, okay, or clanging a bell, whatever, in some periodic way. And each of these blue circles represents uh, a wave crest or a condensation in the wave where the pressure is high. So that's propagating outward. And those um, condensations are concentric. They all have the same center because they're all originating from the same place. Well, what if the truck is moving? Well, when it was here, it sent out a wave. And that wave is now here after it's, pro after it's moved a little ways. When it was a little further over, it sent out this wave. So this is the first wave that it sent out. This is the second. This is the third. And, and then this is the fourth wave that it sent out. So these waves, these uh, condensation rings, uh, actually these are spheres, are, are no longer concentric. And um, they get bunched up here. And the observer here sees a smaller wavelength than an observer that's behind the truck who sees a larger wavelength. Well, V equals F lambda. And if the wavelength, if the speed's going to be the same, and if you decrease the wavelength, lambda, you're going to have to increase the frequency. So this is a smaller wavelength and a higher frequency. The way to think about it is if this is an observer for the truck is approaching this observer. Well, it's the, the observed frequency is higher by an observer that the truck is approaching. Okay, so another way to think about it is that those waves are getting bunched up and, and they're coming at you faster. But that's the essential physical key to understanding the Doppler effect. As a as source is approaching you, that frequency is going to be higher because those waves are getting bunched up and they're coming at you faster, the, waves, the wave condensations are. And here's the uh, concept. There's a, a nice derivation in the book. I'm not going to derive these for you. It uses the very principles that we just talked about in the last slide, but um, the, the math is a little bit of a pain. So if the source is approaching the observer, then the frequency detected by the observer, so that's the frequency that's detected by that observer that the truck is approaching, that's this guy here, is going to actually be higher than, so F naught is greater than Fs if the source is approaching the observer. How so? How can we see that mathematically? Well, how can you prove that F naught is actually greater than Fs? Well, this is a 1 divided by 1 minus Vs over V. What's Vs? Vs is the speed of the source. So that's the speed of the truck in our example. Might be moving 30 meters per second or whatever. So that's that speed right here. 
And we're going to divide that by the speed of sound, which is clearly relevant in this problem. V is the speed of sound. As long as that speed of the truck is less than the speed of sound, this equation is valid. As it approaches it uh, and increases beyond the speed of sound, then this equation gets to be a little problematic. But the speed of the truck will normally be less than the speed of sound. So this number, this ratio, will be less than 1. And we'll be taking 1 minus the number that's less than 1. And that'll give us a number that's less than 1. And if you take 1 in the numerator and divide by a number that's less than 1, you get a number that's greater than 1. And if you multiply fs by a number that's greater than 1, <laughs> then uh, f0 will be greater than fs. So that's just a quick uh, mathematical view of why that um, observer should see higher frequency than the source when the source is approaching, the, source, the truck is approaching the observer. Uh, if the source is leaving the observer, the opposite happens, and we get um, the, the observed frequency is actually less than the frequency of the source. And that's because we have a plus sign here. So that's a Doppler effect. We'll be able to do a bunch of uh, examples in the homework, etc. Here's one quick example. If you've got a train approaching, uh, traveling at four, 44 meters per second, and you've got a horn that the, the train engineer is sounding, 450, 415 hertz, then um, we just plug the numbers in. Here's the frequency of the source, the horn in the, in the, in the train, and then we're going to have 1 over 1 minus the speed of the train, which is 44.7 meters per second, that's the number right here, divided by the speed of sound in air. That's a number we talked about before, 343 meters per second. Plug the numbers in and you get uh, an observed, a frequency observed that's greater than the frequency of the source. So this number is bigger than this number on approach. And when it's leaving, you'll definitely see a difference in frequency also. This number is definitely less now than the frequency of the source. So here's a... You've all seen this phenomenon, but now you're going to understand it hopefully a little bit better than you have. When, when a train or a truck or anything approaches and you're on the side of the road, you hear this and it's, it doesn't go it doesn't do that. It goes and then while it's passing you, it's going and then it keeps the same pitch going away. And, um, and the reason is that on approach, you have a certain frequency, the higher frequency that you detect, and when it's going away, you have a lower frequency, and it's only this short amount of time where it's right beside you where it's going from high to low. Let's see here. So what did you hear? And then it passed around. Then it saved that same pitch going further and further away. That's a Doppler effect. You've all seen that at train stations or elsewhere. I think it's pretty cool. Um, these uh, Doppler effect is used in medicine to, to do what's known as a Doppler flow meter. It measures the speed of red blood cells. How does it work? When the sound is reflected from the red blood cell, its frequency is changed in a kind of a Doppler effect. This, the uh, blood cell is moving, and you, you're transmitting some uh, sound Hitting a moving target, this is like a, a police radar as well, it works on the same principle. Hits a moving target, gets reflected back, so this red blood cell now becomes a source. So you have to think about this red blood cell being the source, moving away, and that reflected sound, will its frequency will change.
depending on whether the red blood cell is approaching, like the truck, or, um, or going away.